Hey guys, this is Tom with DraftMagic.com, and here we are for another round daily. We're going to be using the, the White Weenie standard deck that I put together and had quite a lot of success with in the uh, past couple of events. Um, really liking the deck. I just love how good Tally is right now against uh, so much of the metagame. So we will see uh, how it goes, but um, really kind of quick points just to um, bring up here. The, the main game plan is just to get in and just kill them by damage. Um, it's fairly straightforward. The couple cards here that really play a really big role are going to be the, uh, the inclusion of the Elite Vanguard. A very, very aggressive early drop. Um, a lot of the humans decks did not run Elite Vanguard in the past, um, and I think that uh, it was much to their detriment. Um, it could be that the format has... Uh, you know, sped up a little bit, or whatever the case may be, but uh, the Vanguard is very good, and you have to understand that <coughs> while he becomes outclassed very quickly, getting the early damage in on turns one and two, um, you know, really does matter quite a bit. So, really happy to have him in the deck. Riders of Gavany provides a much-needed wave of indifference effect um, that this deck is really looking for while at the same time providing a creature and a body um, to keep the creature count high and to keep champion um, getting even larger. So, very excited and we'll see you for round one. Hey guys, here we are for round one with the, the White Weenie standard deck. Opening hand is not the best. We don't have any one drops. Um, you know, definitely we could hopefully draw into some nice two drops, but we do have a, you know, we've got land, we have some later game. I think I'm happy to keep this on the draw. Especially without being able to scout the opponent's deck um, in the later rounds, you know, kind of flying blind. I think it's nice just to have land kind of going into the first game. Looks like we are up against, um, could be, yep, looks like Delver. All right. Happy to go ahead and drop out the uh, Townsfolk. Hopefully he doesn't have the mana leak. Kind of one of the nice side effects of <coughs> people playing Cavern of Souls more and more is that the, uh, the number of main deck mana leaks has really gone down, um, which as a aggressive player, um, you know, I really, really enjoy not seeing. Um, you know, it really kind of takes some very necessary pieces away from the control player. And having pretty much played aggro for most of my um, most of my time playing Magic, uh, in, at least in tournament Magic, a little bit playing combo, but never really playing control. Um, you know, having access to card like Cavern really, really helps this type of deck. No reason to risk the uh, mana leak again. Plus, we just want to start bashing with Crusader. So we'll go ahead and get in, and then drop Crusader. And then have Riders of Gavany back up for next turn. So he's probably going to um, bounce whichever creature we play at the end of our turn, which is honestly fine. So he's probably just searching for white mana as soon as possible. There we go. So we should realize that Geist will be coming down next turn, most likely. <coughs> so at this point, we could just drop War, um, Warzone and then bash in and then drop Honor the Pure. Um, or we could just drop Riders and make our guys pro-human. I think... Because, I mean, most likely he probably has Vapor Snag. Um, although if he had it, he would have used it last turn, so he may not have Vapor Snag. 
I guess, you know, kind of getting more creatures on the table is always good, but I mean, with, with the double strike, I'd rather kind of run the honor, the, uh, honor the pure here play. I'm happy to just use this just to get in and kind of see what we can do here. So he could have the mana leak, um, once again, and he does have the leak. So it could have been better to play that next turn when we have five mana. Um, probably was incorrect, although having access to the war zone is kind of nice, just to force in more damage. So it looks like he did indeed get the Vapor Snag there. So it's kind of a blowout. And, alright, so he really kind of turned the tables here on us a little bit. So I guess next turn he just goes attack, take my war zone into Geist. But I think we still just go ahead and drop riders here. So now he probably ends up going, let's see, I'm gonna push through humans. Okay, I guess he has Angel. So we, we I mean, suppose we could have gone for Angel there in terms of creature type to avoid. Now he's gonna get to bounce again with Vapor Snag. There's the Geist, and now we're kind of in trouble. Um, really a couple misplays here in the beginning, put us on the back foot. Um, still kind of getting used to this deck, you know, how it, how it runs, but a couple of easily avoidable misplays there. And I'm not sure about the the war, uh, the war zone. I still think it's a decent uh, one of in this deck, um, just because we do run 29 creatures and the four gathers. So, you know, really essentially 33 creatures. I, I do like it in this deck. Uh, obviously, at, at the present moment, it's not really doing a whole lot for us. But now he gets to trade his Geist for um, our champion. He has the angel back up, just in case. <clears throat> so unfortunately, I think we're dead on the table right here. Um, okay. Kind of misplayed that first game. Really want to focus on trying to, to not get uh, blown out by Mana Leak, so... Alright, so we're bringing uh, Thalia. 
Other cards you want to bring in here are definitely going to be Graph Digger's Cage. Um, since we're going to be on the play, we want to bring in Nevermore to shut down Angel. And then... Deflection is... Uh, it's not a bad card against, um, against Elver, but let's see what we want to cut here. We want to cut Hero Blade Hold and possibly Riders, just because... Well, Riders can be nice to help us sway with indifference, but at the same time, it's a little bit late and we can get blown out by Vapor Snag. So let's see, if we take these out, give us a little bit of room. Inquisitor is pretty good here just because it's fast, it's got first strike. And I think that we definitely want Silverblade Paladin. We may or may not want to... We could probably shave like a Relic Warder here, I mean it's still fine. If he's, he's most likely running swords and also probably the... Um, the, uh, the 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 pike um, the spell pike there thing um, you know but uh, I'm not sure if you want to shave to make room for deflection deflection is nice here hmm I think we're just going to run it as is and kind of see how it works if it turns out we're not seeing a lot of artifacts we can always shave down some of the relic orders. But even a 2-2 two -two on turn 2 is great. Just want to put on as much pressure as humanly possible. Unfortunately, he did have the gut shot. But uh, Talia is about the best thing you can be doing against the, the deck we're up against, so definitely happy we've got Talia on the table. And being able to force him to, to ponder for two is just, I mean, Talia is such a beating against Elver. So pretty much now, whatever he does, next turn we just play Honor the Pure and bash in. He could have the Mana Leak back up, but even if he Mana Leaks here, he's just so far behind. Alright, I guess he has Gut Shot for Talia. And if he takes two damage to Gut Shot Talia, I'm perfectly fine with that. Now we get him to five, get him on the back foot here. At this point, he's probably gonna be dropping Geist. Oh, I guess Blade Splicer. Blade Splicer is pretty hilarious though against Relic Order. So. It's a nice drop for us. And now, Pretty much no matter what he drops, he should be dead on the table. Unless he has Day of Judgment. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, with Italia, I like maybe keeping Deflection out, just keeping more creature heavy. Um, kind of like our setup right here, I think we're just going to keep it as is. It'd be a wonderful hand if we had mana. This hand, on the other hand, is just fine.
So here I think we drop Inquisitor. Which is definitely a beating against uh, Geist. Looks like now he's stuck on land. Very happy to see that. So now he wants to make the trade for Vanguard, which is fine. So now we just go ahead and drop Gather into Honor the Pure next turn. And just keep him on the back foot. Because now he's under a ton of pressure, right? And if he drops Blade Splicer, and I guess he's just whipping out air. So I guess he's going to double gut shot here. Which is annoying, but we're still fine with. So now, dropping down Silverblade, and then if he does hit the land for the, oh, I guess he's just got double dismember. There's a Splicer, just like we hoped. And now we can drop Relic Warder and Vanguard to push for damage. So here he needs land into Restoration Angel. And that's the match. So, you know, definitely misplayed a little bit in the beginning there, but turned it around. Um, what I like about the deck is it has so much pressure and so much just forward momentum. Um, you know, especially against a deck as aggressive as Delver, just being able to really put him on the back foot. Now, to be fair, he did get uh, mana screwed in game three. Um, but just being able to go, you know, turn one guy into turn two guy into, you know, turn three, either double strike effect or uh, honor the pure. Very, very happy with the deck so far. So we will see you for round two.